Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, March 19. Minister of Finance Dr. Nigel Clark says the country's move to an inflation-targeting policy will ensure low, stable and predictable inflation. Inflation targeting is a monetary policy regime in which a central bank has a specific target inflation rate for the medium term and informs the public. Dr. Clark says this regime is gradually being incorporated by the Bank of Jamaica BOJ as the cornerstone of its monetary policy. Full-fledged inflation targeting will only become a reality when we complete our next phase of central bank reforms, our modernization of the central bank, and to make the central bank uh, independent and to upgrade its governance framework, put in inflation uh, targeting as the centerpiece of its monetary policy objectives. Dr. Clark was speaking at yesterday's opening of a two-day workshop on international economics and finance. Governor of the Central Bank of Paraguay, Carlos Fernandez Valdovinos, was at the workshop and voiced his support of an inflation-targeting regime for Jamaica, saying the country's macroeconomic stability provided the ideal environment for such a policy. There is no better time for you to do the reforms than right now that is peaceful. It's very bad to try to do the reform during a crisis, being that economic crisis, financial crisis, and extra rate crisis. This is the right time. So hopefully you're going to have a brand new central bank uh, charter that is going to be useful for the future. The International Economics and Finance Workshop was hosted by the VOJ. It brought together top researchers and policymakers within the Western Hemisphere to discuss recent theoretical and empirical advances in international economics and finance. A tuition-free school for children living below the poverty line is to be constructed in St. Catherine by the year 2020. It will cater to students aged 3 to 19 years. The Ministry of Education signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Crystal House International on Monday to establish the facility. Portfolio Minister Senator Ruel Reed says construction will begin following approval by Cabinet. The government of Jamaica has agreed to a long-term lease for lands located in Spanish Town St. Catherine. Kindergarten and grade one will each be accommodated in three classrooms designed for 20 students each. With the exception of kindergarten and grade one, school capacity will be planned for 30 students per classroom and 60 students per grade level. Crystal House, a U.S.-based charity, will construct the property at its own expense to accommodate 840 students from kindergarten through to grade 13 at the secondary level. We have terrific plans for this little school. It's not that little, is it? 840 kids. Uh, and we really look forward to working with the ministry and to helping to make lives better for the little children of Jamaica. A $300 million program will be rolled out to further develop the country as a gastronomy destination. Among the initiatives is an agricultural attraction in Lilliput, St. James, to engage travelers in the From Farm to Table experience. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the program will also include the hosting of more food festivals and funding for small farmers. Food tourism is going to be the major drive for a greater experiential tourism product in Jamaica, but it is also going to be the basis on which a larger number of ordinary Jamaicans are going to be involved in the value chain of tourism. Minister Bartlett was speaking at the recent opening of the Grander View restaurant in St. James. The program to develop Jamaica as a gastronomy destination falls under the Tourism Linkages Network, which aims to increase the consumption of local goods and services by guests at resorts and attractions. The Jamaica Defence Force JDF is urging persons who want to join the force to rely only on information from its official website, social media platform or mainstream news. The warning comes as a fake Jamaica National Service Corps JNSC recruitment advertisement on social media resulted in over 2,000 persons turning up at Oak Park Camp on Monday. While the JDF has launched a probe into the source of the social media post, the Army decided to process the persons who showed up from as far as Westmoreland. Having seen persons here from all over the island, the military decided not to turn them back today and the directive was given for us to process and handle as many persons as we could. As a result, a number of these persons have been put through our initial enlistment test which involves pre-medical screenings and sitting an academic exam. 
National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang says the government is committed to strengthening border security as part of measures to curb the illicit flow of weapons into the country. Minister Chang says the trafficking of illegal weapons continues to be a threat to international and domestic peace and security. Jamaica Defense Force, of course, recently acquired some additional equipment to assist in protecting our borders. We're an island state and border security is critical to our continued success in fighting the scourge of crime. By reducing illicit guns, we expect not only to stem crime, but improve our economic outlook. Minister Chang was addressing members of the diplomatic community recently. The security minister says Jamaica will continue to strengthen relations with its international partners as it implements policies and programs to create a safer Jamaica. Partnerships, exchanges and scholarships have greater facilitated capacity building, foster greater mutual social understanding, and this will undoubtedly result in the continued development and progress of our countries. And finally, the Housing Agency of Jamaica, HAJ, has finalized the preparation of more than 400 land titles since April 2018 and is looking to increase that number to 500 by March 31 this year. The agency's senior manager for community development, Nakia McMorris, made the announcement while addressing a JIS think tank recently. Mrs. McMorris said emphasis was being placed on housing areas that were part of the now defunct Operation Pride. We have over 80 communities that we work with and so during this year what we've done is that we've taken out a certain set of communities that we're focusing on, most of them being in Westmoreland and also in St. James. That's where the agency has a lot of titles for and that's where we know we can make the most impact in terms of issuing the titles from the agency's end. Mrs. McMorris said the HAJ was working on a system that would make the process of getting land titles much easier for residents, including measures to settle outstanding payments. The HAJ has reportedly issued over 9,000 titles since 2012, with 7,000 more to be distributed. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.